I decided to go into medicine when I was about nine years old. Um, and I said I was, to my parents I was going to be a doctor, and, and they were both uh, pleased, but they were also slightly amused, because the fact is that you only needed to mention the word blood, and I would faint. And so my parents said it was all very well to become a doctor, but actually um, this was going to be a problem. But, but I persevered and said, no, no, it didn't matter. When I got to university and I came up to Oxford to, to read medicine, um, I was still in the fainting mood, so um, on one anatomy lesson um, where we were dissecting a cadaver and the lecturer was telling us about the whole of the upper anatomy of the body and I just keeled over. I, I came to um, and then I stood up and fainted again and he carried on talking but he just put his foot on my chest so that I couldn't get up but he didn't do anything else other than have his foot on my chest. I never fainted again after that. The humiliation was so great that, um, uh, and so uh, no amount of uh, blood or gore will affect me these days. I was academically reasonably good, um, so I went on from doing my uh, medical degree at Oxford to do a DPhil, which I did in um, auditory psychophysics. And I was, uh, I worked with a physicist um, did a lot of mathematics um, and looked at a whole lot of quite interesting mechanisms of why it is that you uh, understand speech. So it was all about frequency modulated sound and uh, the mathematics behind it. So I started then thinking why I'd become a neurologist and I was uh, plotting that out. I did a year's neurology and I was then looking around for a general registrar job. So Robert Turner came up to me and said, oh, nice to see you again, David, what are you doing? You see, and I said, well, I've, you know, I've been doing my neurology, I'm looking around for a job at the moment as a registrar. And he said, what about research? And I said, oh, I've done my research. But then I realized that he wasn't saying, what about research in a sort of philosophical way? He was offering me a job. So by the end of this conversation, I was saying, but on the other hand, I haven't got anything to do at the moment, you know, so, and so Robert said, well, come and work for me. So I did. I really enjoyed working for Robert. He was a very good scientist, very good clinician, uh, entertaining, um, and uh, the ideal person to work with, always coming up with ideas. But the first idea that I came up with is saying, looking at insulin secretion and saying, hang on a moment, this is a, a non-steady state uh, secretion, we can analyze that mathematically. And we looked at that and realized that actually insulin was secreted in pulses. And there are pretty good mathematical reasons as to why your body does that, because there's a mismatch uh, between the rate at which insulin works and the rate at which glucose can clear. And if you don't produce it in pulses, uh, you would go hypo. And the easiest way to understand that is that if you were in an ITU and someone had a high blood sugar, and you came along and you gave them some insulin, you wouldn't measure their blood glucose a minute later and say, hang on a moment, their blood glucose is still high, have some more insulin. The UK PDS results were received with huge acclaim in a vast hall in Barcelona. And we had spoken for two hours over this. We'd got a big allocation of time. And it was the first time that in type 2 diabetes, it was really realized how important glycemic control was. And indeed, how <coughs> controlling that, especially with metformin, would give you an, a better outcome in terms of uh, <coughs> specific results of nephropathy and uh, retinopathy and cardiovascular disease. So it, it was a ground changing occasion and afterwards everybody realized that actually you needed to be controlling people's blood glucose very quickly um, and and the the outcomes were very fast after UK PDS there wasn't there was no backlash of saying this can't be true everybody believed it which was great the the, uh, the diabetes control trial of uh, uh, in America the DCCT had demonstrated this in type 1 diabetes but that was a very different disease that people recognized that, that that was an insulin deficiency disease and maybe that was causing your problems. But when you'd got a lot of insulin around, it still was absolutely clear that it's not about insulin, it's about how much glucose you've got. The UK PDS is, is, has been wonderful and the, the 
10-year post studies that we published in 2008 demonstrated again that actually you had a legacy effect so that, that it matters that you get good treatment early uh, compared with just waiting for people to deteriorate and then trying to treat it. Well, it felt astonishing to be in, in the hall on that day. Uh, we took it in turns to talk about various aspects of the, of the UK PDS and the uh, reception was just uh, extraordinary. And of course, we were, we were pleased at how it went. Uh, again, because of Robert Turner and, and Rory Holman's uh, uh, professionalism, the whole thing went absolutely beautifully. Uh, Robert can speak in public, I can speak in public, Rory can speak in public. We'd got good public speakers who could stand up, say what the science was and sit down. And, and the, the result was that we did get some applause. I've had an interesting life in, in diabetes. I became the clinical director of diabetes in Oxford while still retaining quite a lot of academic uh, interests and recognised then while we were in the infirmary that we first of all needed to fundraise to put up a diabetes centre in the infirmary, which I did, and then recognised that that would only last us for a few years and that we needed to have a bigger idea. And the bigger idea was the Oxford Centre for Diabetes Endocrinology and Metabolism and I fundraised for that. Um, and we worked very carefully with the architects on that. We managed to put up a really iconic building and we didn't allow the NHS usual view, which is I know how we can reduce the cost on this is that we can not have beach doors, we can have cardboard doors, you know, that'll save us this much money. And we never allowed any of that to go on because every time I was at the meetings, I used to say, if this is going to cost more, then you tell me. It's my job to raise the money. It's your job to build to the standard that we've agreed.